Welcome back to The Ed Show. President Obama's announcement last week on same-sex marriage, marriage equality, really was a defining moment in this election. Over the course of uh, several years, as I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together, uh, when I think about uh, those soldiers or airmen or marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf uh, and yet feel constrained, even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. And a week after that soundbite, we are still calculating just what kind of an impact that's going to have on this election. The first sitting U.S. president endorsing marriage equality. But the issue has divided some in the African-American community in America. And now those who oppose same-sex marriage find themselves at odds with the president's position. Let's turn to Michael Eric Dyson, MSNBC political analyst and Georgetown University professor, and Sophia Nelson, a contributor for the griot.com and the author of the book, Black Women Redefined, Dispelling Myths and Discovering Fulfillment in the Age of Michelle Obama. Welcome to both of you. Great to have you with us tonight. Now, Michael, I know you covered this issue last week when you hosted this show. Sure. Uh, is there anything you want to add to that? I mean, you had a lot on the table. Where... <laughs> I did. I had a lot on the table. But I want to first uh, begin by saying I want to apologize to Sophia and Jamal and Roland. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a fit of passion, uh, I called up my friends in the spirit of love uh, to say that, hey, we could do better than this. And I shouldn't have called their names if they weren't here to defend themselves. So I apologize to Sophia, to Roland, and to Jamal. What I was trying to argue, I conflated two issues. The marriage equality, which is very serious and a significant issue on the one hand, and the black homophobia, as I perceived it, within black communities. Homophobia is not something that is endemic to black people. It's across the globe, so to speak. But in this case, black homophobia fuels, I think, the beliefs about black gay and lesbian people and whether or not they can get married. So I think the two issues are related, but separate, and I wanted to address both S of them. Sophia, your response to that. Uh, I mean, you're, you're both friends. Mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, in, in, in the heat of the moment of the debate, uh, I mean, this says that there is a division in the African-American community in this country. How intense is it? Well, first, let me say thank you to you for having me here, and thank you to MSNBC. You're fair and balanced, and I like that, if I may say that. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Um, to Michael, who's my friend, uh, like a family member. Now you can member. get after him. Exactly. Um, <laughs> he and Marcia are like family to us, and um, he's my brother in Christ, though. But so. you're indifferent with this. You don't believe in marriage equality. Is that correct? If you let me just finish. I'm going to get to that, I promise. Um, and I just want to say to Michael that you're my brother in Christ, so I forgive you. I thank you for that. And we're going to learn and we're going to show people how to act as Christians. To your question, the issue for me, and I'd like to address this if I could to my fellow Americans who are gay, uh, lesbian, and transgender. I want to say to them specifically that those of us who oppose same-sex marriage do so as a matter of faith. Those of us who oppose it on faith reasons, that is. And it's not because we think you're different or you're less than or you're not right or you're other or something that's insidious like that. I know that offends me personally. I think it offends people of conscience. And someone like myself, Michael, and why I was so upset about your mm -hmm. rant was that if you look at my record on this, Ed, I support hate crimes legislation for people that would abuse or hurt gays and lesbians. I support same, um, the uh, civil unions. Yeah. I support adoption. I support them being able to visit their loved one in the hospital. So there are people like me of faith who don't agree with same-sex marriage for the faith reason, the biblical reason, the definition of a man and a woman being married. But I, I, I also support a lot about the agenda. But you're a man of faith. I'm why don't, a, why don't you see it the way she sees it? I'm an ordained Baptist minister for over 33 years, and I think that um, my point is that we can't interpret the Bible literally. The, the real culprit here is the biblical interpretation that is literal, so that when Sophia refers to marriage as between a man and a woman, we know marriage was a complicated affair. It's evolved over serious, uh, the last several centuries, in a very complicated fashion. It's not just one man and one woman. It's been polygamy. It's been uh, homosexual marriage that had to be banned at a certain point. 
So my point is, we don't take the Bible literally. The Bible says in Leviticus that if somebody is gay, they ought to be killed. I don't think Sophia Nelson is promoting the biblical interpretation that says that gay and lesbian people should be killed. And if she is, then she hasn't put that forth. And if she doesn't, then she doesn't take the Bible literally. I do take the Bible literally, but I'm not a theologian and I'm not a pastor, so I'm not going to argue that with you. The reason I'm here tonight is because you called people of faith sexual regnecks and bigots. No, and, well, that's not what you, I did. Well, we can play the I'm tape. The context, who Michael, who are, my I'm, turn to talk. Okay, All I'm saying, on. brother, is is that those of us who are coming from a faith perspective so am I. happen to believe. You keep dividing us. Well, as if no, no, you're particular. dividing. You're dividing. I'm not going to get into you. We're here but because you called, you called I, names. Wait, wait, let me ask you, you called this. names, Am I Michael. coming from a faith perspective? In your opinion, you are. Oh, 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 I, now I, you're doing I would, the Obama no, is not no, a pre- No, 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 Obama, Obama had my position for eight years until no, 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 no. he changed no, no, it two no. weeks when, ago. No, 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 when white Christians yes, are asked, is Obama, when Franklin Graham was asked, is Obama a Christian, he says he says he is, but when, he, when he's oh, asked about Mitt Romney... I think the president's Romney, a Christian, No, no, I'm do. asking you about me. Are you telling me I'm not a man of faith? No, I, I believe you're a Christian. Okay. I, I called you my Christian okay. brother. Okay, no, no, what I'm saying is this, so the people of faith can disagree. Yes, yeah, so why, okay. why would you call us names? Because we disagree. No, no, no. This is what I said. When I said sexual rednecks and sexual bigots, I quoted Howard Thurman, who said a bigot is a person who makes an idol of his commitment. The reason you have a faith problem with gay and lesbian people, you're throwing them a bone by saying, look, I believe in civil unions and the like. But what, you, what you're not addressing is the fact that your faith fuels the belief that to be gay is to be automatically a sinner. To be gay is to be outside of the covenant of God. And I'm arguing that that already disqualifies gay and lesbian, transgender and bisexual people as your equals in the faith. And I think that's a bigoted position. Can I speak to that? I don't think it's bigoted for me, for a Catholic, for a Muslim, or for Mm -hmm. a Jew. All of those texts, the Quran, uh, the Torah, the Bible, all define marriage as between male and female. Jesus says in Matthew 19, 4, if you want to go Bible, we can go there. We go back to Genesis 2 and go to 1 Corinthians 9. We can go to Romans 1, Michael. It's consistent. All of those. I don't want to argue faith with you right. in that person. But what I do want to say, Ed, is that you cannot say that our faith is causing us to be homophobic, homophobic or bigoted because the Bible itself defines us. I didn't. Your issue is with God, brother. No, 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 it's not no, no. with we me. Will, we, no, no, will, your interpretation, we will continue this okay. discussion in round two because she makes a very interesting point that President Obama saw the world the way she sees it right now on this issue until a, until a week ago. So, oh, I mean, I think the political, that's where the political... But there's the undercurrent, Ed. All I'm speaking to is the yeah. fact, Jesus said, if your eye offends, you cut it off. If your hand offends, you cut it off. I don't think Sophia wants to do that. We're Mike, not Michael, interpreting the Bible. Michael, later. Eric Dyson, and Sophia <laughs> Nelson, they're still friends, folks. Thank you for joining <laughs> us tonight. Uh, and you will not believe... 